Welcome everyone to the Emerson 2012 Christmas Lottery and Auction. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and a Happy New Year. I've really pulled out all the stops this year to produce some very, very special knives for this event. And uh, we've rolled out the red carpet and uh, we've got the knives here to show you. I'm going to describe some of them to you. Uh, it's the probably grandest and greatest collection of Emerson high-end custom knives uh, that I've ever had in one place at one time. And I hope you enjoy the auction. So let's get started. Uh, we're starting right off with a real special uh, edition of a Black 6, a Black 7, and a Black 5. Uh, I've only ever had these three knives in combination together uh, at one other show, and that was at the gathering uh, maybe a year or two ago. And so what I've got here is I've got a black six, all black, cooler than cool knife. Everybody wants one of these. Uh, high, high demand. There's only been a few of them made. So I've got a black six, black seven, all black handles, all black liners, all black blade, and a black five, the little brother. All with checkered handles and just a beautiful, stunning uh, collection that uh, I hope you guys like as much as I do because it's something that uh, would be great. Whoever gets these knives is going to get some special pieces. Uh, I've got the biggest collection of CQC 6's that's ever existed in one place at one time here too. So let's move right on to some of those 6's that I've got and uh, I'll show them to you. Start out with a Real, real pretty full dress CQC6 with brushed titanium uh, bolsters, pearl handles, absolutely beautiful knife. Uh, people go crazy for this knife. Uh, and every time I have one at their show, it it's jumps off the table. It's one of the first ones that gets picked usually in the lotteries. Uh, we step up a little bit. Again, full dress CQC6, pearl handles with a ladder pattern Damascus blade. Uh, super pretty. Very rare and uh, again a unique knife that uh, is, would be a perfect uh, knife for anybody who collects these CQC6 uh, knives. Moving on, I have a bronze bolstered walnut checkered handled CQC6. I love this combination of the warm wood with the warm bronze. Uh, it always reminds me of something that's kind of old English, if you will. Uh, I kind of look at this knife and I go, this is the kind of thing that I'd find in, a, in an antique store in England or something like that. It's a really beautiful, beautiful combination. Uh, I love that wood and, uh, and, and bronze look that this has. In fact, I liked it so much I made another one similar, but not quite the same, which has brass bolsters and black checkered micarta handles. Again, that gold colored brass contrasted against that, that uh, charcoal black uh, handle with that nice silver blade on there. It's a beautiful, beautiful knife. Really a pretty uh, CQC6. And then we come to the Blood 6, which is a, again, full dress knife with a red and black layered carbon fiber handle, brushed titanium bolsters, and a satin finished blade. Absolutely stunning knife. Again, the Blood 6. Unique knife, never made any with this kind of carbon fiber before. So again, very special CQC6. And, uh, and overall, a very, very special collection of CQC6s. Now, we get to a knife that uh, I had trouble actually getting up here to the auction because everybody that saw it while I was building it uh, in the shop was like, dang, I want that knife. Uh, that's the one I'd want if I could have one of those custom knives. And then on the way to getting this done, my wife Mary saw it and said, well, she wants it. She goes, I want that knife. And I go, well, I can't give it to you, hon. It's, it's already up in the auction, so uh, we got to have it for the auction. And uh, she's got a pretty good eye for things that are pretty, so I think you'll agree. Uh, this is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful uh, Damascus uh, Persian. We've got a metal matrix handle with a ladder pattern Damascus blade and a brushed titanium uh, bolsters on it. It's, it's a stunning, absolutely beautiful knife. Uh, 
one of the things that I think uh, that makes it so pretty is the fact that we've got this contrast between the handle and the blade offset by that brushed titanium bolster in there. Because I think you can overdress a knife, you can actually take it too far. Uh, there's a point where it's just right and anything more is just too much. Uh, for example, if I put Mocha May or, or Damascus bolsters on here, I think it would have ruined the look of the knife. I like clean, I like just enough not too much and I think we nailed it on this knife right here and I do I will guarantee this this is the uh, prettiest uh, I don't know if it's the prettiest knife I've ever made but I guarantee you this it's the prettiest uh, Persian knife that I've ever made and uh, you'll agree whoever get, gets this knife is getting a gem I'm telling you that right now it's absolutely stunning I've got another special little knife here the MV1 absolutely beautiful knife uh, there's a little story behind the MV1, especially this full dress version. Uh, the first full dress knife that I ever made was an M model MV1. And it was back in the days when I was uh, working with Naval Special Warfare, building some CPC-6s and some other knives for them. Uh, the guys approached me and said, hey, we got an Admiral that's going to retire, and we want to get him something special. And I said, well, I, I got a nice little knife called the MV1 which is a clean clean little uh, design might be a nice knife to give as a gift and they said yeah but you know we want to give him something fancy something special something pretty and I said dang uh, I don't know what to do uh, and then I thought well how about if I put pearl handles on it brush the uh, titanium so that it uh, looked, looked better dressed up and so I showed it to them and they said that's perfect that's what we want and uh, that was the first full dress uh, knife that I ever made. In other words, I took a regular hard use knife, dressed it up, and uh, you know it was given as a gift to the Admiral. I've made several of these over the years for other people, uh, uh, and I made several for other uh, uh, retirees and stuff from uh, commanding officers and things like that that the guys wanted to give special gifts to. But uh, the MV1 was actually the very first full dress knife that I, that I ever made. And I've got a version of that here today at the auction. So again, that's a little history on the uh, on the MV1. Next knives up are the uh, two cooler than cool knives, ones that I really really like for a bunch of different reasons. Uh, but uh, they are the Gypsy Jack, the Blue Moon Jack, and a little brother, the Mini Jack, called the Dark Moon Jack. Now the Blue Moon Jack, I call the Blue Moon because it's got blue carbon fiber handles on it. Uh, it's just a real cool knife and uh, it dressed up this Gypsy Jack to the point where it's just absolutely perfect looking. Uh, the Little Brother, maybe that's a bid calling in. Uh, little Brother has got uh, the black carbon fiber, we call that the Dark Moon uh, Mini Jack. So we've got a Dark Moon and a Blue Moon. And the thing about this uh, Gypsy Jack is you look at it and you go, that's kind of uh, out there for Emerson Designs. You know, why did you do that? And the thing about it is I actually built the knife because I was doing some work for Keith Richards. And uh, he, has, uh, he has a tremendous knife collection and he's, he's got a lot of exotic knives and things like that. And the design we were kind of working on uh, was the Gypsy Jack looking a knife. And I thought, damn, that's a cool knife. Uh, I like the look of it, but I'll tell you what, the first time I picked it up, I thought, dang, you know what, this, this is a formidable weapon. I mean, you know, make no bones about it. In the hands of, a, of an experienced fighter, maybe one of those gypsies of the old days, uh, this knife could do a huge amount of damage. Yeah, which brings me to a point uh, I guess I should make is that uh, even though these knives are pretty and fancy and dressed up uh, to go downtown, uh, they're still knives. They're still working knives. They're still hard use knives. Uh, you could use any one of these knives to protect your life or the life of a loved one with it. Uh, they might be pretty looking, they might be fancy and all dressed up, but they're still an Emerson knife. And the way that I make knives, my philosophy behind it, um, those of you who might know me, uh, is they're a weapon first, they're a knife second, and they're a collector's piece third and I always do it in that order. So any of these knives that are dressed up fancy for collectors, uh, I want you to know they're still as hard to use a knife as I've ever made for any Navy SEAL teams and stuff like that. So uh, again, even though they're pretty, they're still an Emerson knife, and you know what the name Emerson stands for. 
we move on to the gentleman folder that I make and again I've said this is about as much of a gentleman as I can ever make it's called the gentleman Jim this one's called bloody knuckles because gentleman Jim Corbett uh, was a former uh, world champion bare knuckle boxer from the early early uh, 1900s and uh, with the handles on here that's a, again a metal uh, matrix uh, copper metal matrix kind of a red looking color uh, I call it the bloody knuckles and again a very very beautiful very clean sleek uh, riverboat gambler looking type of knife that I think you'll love uh, called bloody knuckles got an interesting little knife here which is the Mach 1 which has always been one of my favorite designs. I've, I've always liked that knife a lot. Uh, I put a uh, Damascus blade in it. I gave you the straight up gray on green uh, titanium with canvas micarta handle that's on my standard custom knives. Put a uh, Damascus blade in it and voila, it turned out to be a really, really striking knife. And uh, I threw that in because I thought, you know what, this is cool. This really, really looks nice. And again, it's just right. Anything else would have changed the look of it, and it would have been over the top. Beautiful Mach 1 with a Damascus blade. Back to the to the bronze and walnut again. Standard CQC7 uh, design, but dressed up in that old English, old world look. Pretty, pretty knife. Love that, that walnut against the bronze, like I said before. Beautiful CQC7. Since I'm on that kick for a moment, I'll talk about these two knives. Uh, once again, brass with a black micarta and a black blade. Only this time it's a CQC 45. The CQC 45 uh, is, a, is an outstanding knife. There's, you know, and again, it sounds like I might be bragging, but uh, I really believe what I'm saying here. This this knife is a, a one of those where I just nailed everything right. Uh, the CQC 45 was a knife I designed uh, to go with a gun that I spec'd out for Les Bear called the Emerson CQC 45 and the, the uh, CQC 45 knife uh, went along to complement it. And I'll tell you it's interesting because you know people will make a knife to go with a gun and sometimes the, the gun and the knife they don't look like they belong in the same room together. Uh, but I'll tell you what, if you ever pick up one of these CQC 45s, if you're a 1911 guy, uh, you pick up a CQC 45 knife and the first thing that comes to mind is this feels just like a, a 1911. And uh, I think I nailed this design dead on. It's spot on in representing what a, what a 1911 would be if it were a knife. And uh, beautiful brass on, on black. I mentioned in my, in my write-ups that uh, one of my favorite guns was an all-black Colt 1911. And uh, so I made a matching version in the knife form here, which is a black on black on black. Uh, CQC 45 because that gun just really to me screams bad intent and when I put this knife together in this black on black on black it said the same thing it, it just screams bad intent and it is a very very striking very beautiful uh, charcoal black uh, version of the Emerson CQC 45 you'll love these knives they're beautiful moving on what I have now is a old school CQC8. This one goes back all the way to uh, my garage days uh, when I was building those knives completely uh, with a minimum of equipment and things like that and uh, I was making these knives for some special units that I was working with and uh, you can see it doesn't have the wave because we didn't have the wave on the original CQC8. There's that phone again. I uh, hope it's somebody calling about the auction. Uh, we didn't have the wave on the original CQC8s, so this is uh, again a sculpted handle, uh, G10, black on black, black bolster, I mean black uh, liners and springs, black blade, black hardware on it. Uh, again, all the way back to the original uh, way that the CQC8 was developed for those special uh, units. Which brings me to the next knives, which when all is said and done, may be the most important knives that we have here um, in this auction for a, a bunch of reasons. Uh, one of my friends uh, donated two knives to me 
that he's carried and that one of his teammates has carried uh, all over the world. And if, if, if the phrase famous in the worst places was ever true, it would absolutely be true about these knives. And if knives could tell stories, uh, you could make a movie about these knives, I guarantee you that. The uh, problem is we could never tell those stories, which brings us to why they're here. This knife right here is the second CQC-8 ever made. And it's marked on the blade P-8002, meaning prototype model 8 number 2. It's got a Navy SEAL Trident engraved on the blade. It's it's got a history that, uh, again, it's got thousands of miles and, and tales to tell woven into its fabric. Uh, but it's a very, very special knife. It has G10 handles with the very first checkering job that I ever did. And uh, I actually did a pretty good job now that I look at it. It's well worn. There's a lot of road wear on this puppy. But uh, uh, still in pretty good shape. The knife has the tweezers in the handle, as I did for some of the guys. Uh, if you look at the blade, it's going to be tough to see from uh, the video here, but the blade is literally beat to hell. Uh, and there's good reason for it. This knife has been there and done that and seen things that uh, maybe someday they'll write about in, in books, but uh, I doubt if some of the stories will ever make it that far because they're still uh, classified. Uh, the thing about these knives, and the reason that they were given to me, was that these are charity knives. These are donated to me to raise money for a family of some of the warriors that were killed in action uh, in this unit. And uh, they gave me another knife, which again is a CQC-8. I'm calling it a second generation CQC-8. Uh, it's when I went to a flat uh, uh, G10 handle rather than the sculpted uh, hand ground. These are both Emerson handmade hand ground uh, knives. Again, this one's got some serious uh, wear on it. Uh, you know, who knows where it's been and, and what it's done. Uh, we can only imagine that. But both of these knives are very special in that 100% of the money is going to be given in cash directly to the family. Uh, that uh, lost their husband and their father because there's children involved here. So I, I'm going to ask you to please be generous. These are pieces of history uh, that were involved in the manhunt for some of the worst uh, terrorists and some of the worst possible people that have ever lived on, on this earth. And uh, to have these in my hands and know that uh, everything that, that happens as far as what you guys uh, bid on these knives is going directly to the family uh, is something real special so please be generous uh, these are again very good historical pieces for people that collect Emerson knives uh, I must caution you they're beat up uh, I'm not going to do a spot treatment on them I'm not going to refurb them they are what they are that's the story of the knives and the, and the wear and the scars and the, and the things that are on these knives are the tale of those knives so I hope you enjoy them I hope you're generous, and uh, I hope you enjoy the, the whole auction and the whole lottery. Uh, again, thank you all, and uh, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and a Happy Hanukkah. Uh, I hope you enjoyed making these uh, bids and things as much as I enjoyed making the knives, because uh, i got to tell you before we go, uh, outside of my shop I have a, a whiteboard, and every time I go into work in my custom area, I mark how many hours a day I work. So I can keep track and keep on, you know, you know, did I work enough this week on customs or do I need to go in there and put some more time in? And usually it's, you know, two, three hours on Monday, two and three hours on Tuesday, uh, four hours on a Wednesday, whatever, you know, it happens to be. But in the last three weeks, I looked at that board and it's 11 hours, 12 hours, 9 hours, 13 hours. Uh, on every single day. So I mean I've, I have really burned the candle at both ends to get all these knives done for you. Uh, I loved every minute of it. I hope you don't get me wrong. I love building knives. I love making knives for people that appreciate what I do. I hope you love what I do as much as I love making them for you. And again, uh, thank you all. I appreciate it. 
and those are the knives for the Emerson uh, Christmas auction 2012.